And welcome to episode 70 of the Techno Buffalo Show. I'm one of your two hosts for today, Sean Ani, editor-in-chief of the site. And I'm joined by deputy managing editor, Todd Hazelton. Hey, everybody. How are you doing today, Todd? I'm good. Getting ready for the holiday here in the United States. Thanksgiving. That's the day I decide to jump on a plane and fly back to the country where we escaped from. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um so first topic I wanted to get to, you know, after last week's show, uh, you know, you really, you turned me around mm -hmm. and I really, I've decided that I, I need to own an Urbane too. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, why are you laughing, Todd? Because they, re well, they didn't recall it. They canceled it. Like they're not going to sell it anymore. It, it was like 24 hours after the podcast. <laughs> Where I'm like, yeah, I really like it. Kind of spoiler. Um, it's cool. Well, you know, I, kinda... I couldn't believe when we got that email. <laughs> yeah. And so I emailed right back like, okay, wait, is it like safe to wear? And they were like, yeah, no problem. And I guess what they're saying is that something – I saw another article. I forget who it was, Financial Times maybe somebody said like they reached out. They figured out it was something to do with like the display over time wouldn't work as well as they want it to. And because of quality concerns, blah, blah, blah you know, they decided not to launch it. So it must have been pretty major. I mean, that's a that's expensive to probably have millions of these or hundreds of thousands or thousands or whatever sitting. Well, somewhere. it's not only the inventory cost, which I'm sure they had, you know, mm -hmm. them ready to roll because they were so close to launch, but it's also the machining costs, you know, right. the R&D costs. It, canceling a product at the literal 11th hour is not a cheap prospect. Yeah, it was almost like the twelfth hour because Verizon and AT and T were already selling it. At least AT and T definitely was, which is crazy. And it makes me wonder, like, did did a carrier notice this or something? Like, how did it get so far? Did I didn't see consumers start to know it, notice it? And reviewers, you know, for the most part, people who had reviewed it already uh, didn't have much to complain about. And to be honest, like, I was wearing it every day. It, it doesn't seem like a forward facing, you know, problem, and yet. It's apparently very serious. So, I don't know. That just that really took me by surprise when we got that email. And me too. I was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially when it was the day after we had spent a good chunk of a podcast discussing it. But uh, <laughs> say la vie. You know, it, it's what happens. It's unfortunate, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I just I find it interesting that they definitely implied in the email that we may never see this watch. Right. They were like. You know, it's not launching now, and it might just never launch. That is really surprising. Which, yeah, and you have to think because LG makes the plastic OLED, the POLED screens. So if it involves that, it's something they've built. But, you know, earlier devices have these plastic OLED screens too. So what's wrong there? Or maybe it's like the wiring. I just can't figure out, like, how, how bad this really could have been. Well, I think we can definitely say that we know what every LG employee is getting is their year-end bonus. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> they're still safe to wear. Yeah, exactly. So uh, there will be a whole lot of LG employees wearing Urban 2s. <laughs> but, uh, well, unfortunate. I feel bad for LG. That that could not have been an easy call to make. Yeah, no, and especially around the holidays, you know, when big time to buy these things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, unfortunate. So uh, this is the last episode for two weeks as I will be off on vacation next week, but we will return after that. But before we head off into the holiday season, we're going to discuss, of course, what is going to be the biggest day this week, not Turkey Day, but Black Friday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, now, do you ever go out in the stores or are you an online shopper or do you just ignore I Black actually Friday? haven't shopped uh, in the past, but this year... I, I've got my eye on just a simple TV because there seems to be so many of them for so cheap, like probably a 32 inch, which is what I have in front it, of me. It is unbelievable how cheap the televisions are going to be this year. Yeah. It, like I think, you know, I've seen plenty priced around 150 bucks. So I would just get a, I want a second one over here. Maybe just two. I mean, you could buy uh, TV in front of me was probably like closer to 300 bucks. Now I can buy two more for 300 bucks and finally sort of outfit my desk with these 32 inch things. I mean, my wife will kill me, but that's what I've been wanting to do. So no better time to do it. I, I'm running two, in addition to my 27 inch iMac, I have two 24 inch 
monitors, mm -hmm. but the televisions have gotten, at least on Black Friday, they've gotten so cheap. They're cheaper than a monitor, which makes no sense to me. I know. Well, I feel like the monitors, because they, they have much sharper resolutions, like here I am with these TVs, you know, I'm stuck at 1080, which is... Okay, at 32 inches sitting this close, you know, I can definitely see some pixels and stuff, but it's good enough for what I want. And I think that's why they get more expensive. And they're definitely, at least compared to these TVs, brighter. Right. I mean, but I mean, it, in my case, you know, the two monitors, you know, the, the left one is running real time traffic reports for the site, and the right one is just running tweet deck. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, the, these are not high resolution things that I'm dealing with. Right. You know, so yeah, it would be great. I, I'm trying to figure out if I have enough room on my desk for two 32 inch televisions, but I'm oh, tempted. There's always room. Now, of course, <laughs> it, it, with it being Black Friday, though, I'm sure that you can pick something up cheaply that will just immediately be marked for return. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> no, I mean, I used to do Black Friday, you know, in person. You know, I would get up at like 2 a.m. and head to Walmart at you know, and be there at like 3 a.m. until mm -hmm. the doorbusters would start at 7. I haven't done that in years. I don't plan on ever doing that again. Um, there is a point where you get to an age where you're like, nope, I'm done. Yeah. It's almost like, okay, I'm willing to pay the difference and just not show up and not deal with the crowds. Well, and, and the thing is, there's so many online deals now that, mm -hmm. you know, even if it's not the exact same model, and, and that's one thing. And here's a tip for a lot of people when you're buying on black Friday now in Todd's case, he's fine with buying whatever, you know, he, he's just looking for screen real estate. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times those televisions are made specifically for the black Friday sale. And so they're, they'll have the majority of the model number will be the same. And then it will end with like a W or a BW or BF, you know, it ends with some different letter code. And that's because like they've made one less HDMI port or they've done something different to it. So you think you're getting the, the regular model, right. but you're actually getting the Black Friday, it didn't cost us as much to make model. Right. So that, that is something definitely to be careful for if you're uh, heading out for Black Friday this year. I, you know, the, the other thing that is coming, I mean, folks, I have to be a little careful here. I, I, I've got some things I've been told under embargo, so I, I can't be too specific, <laughs> but, um, believe me, there's going to be some great phone deals <laughs> going on. Keep your eyes peeled for those. Um, wh which is a bizarre concept to me. You know, it, it's almost like phones have become a gift giving item. And that's so odd to me because to me, a phone is such a personal item. Yeah. You know, I can't imagine you know, even with my parents, me going, here, I bought you this phone. Now you have to live with it for two years. Right. It's weird, except for parents that might not know, like, you know, what they're missing out on. And so you, you give them, I don't know, give them a Nexus 5X, right? And you're like, check it out. It's got a great camera. It's Android. You haven't used this before. And then they, they were like, oh, thanks. That's really cool. And I can live with this for two years because I haven't had it before. But you also, then you look at a kid who's like, you know, reading the site every day and he wants the 128 gigabyte Nexus, you know, 6P. And then you get him a uh, Moto G. Probably like, well, like, ESPN kind of has numbers. some thoughts on that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, then then you can see where they're like, then it's not the personal item. It's not what they wanted. It's all kinds of pain in the butt stuff. But yeah, yeah. No, I. It, it's very odd to me the, the idea of, giving a phone as a gift it's just yeah it was always and the, and the carriers have done this for years right like they have their uh you know i think in the past they've done holiday deals or i remember when they'd have like the red blackberry for sale and you'd get buy one get one but it was like always with a contract so it never really made that much sense like unless you were up for an upgrade it was like okay well you can't buy a phone for somebody but that's changing now because of unlocked devices where you go and you spend 100 bucks 200 bucks 800 bucks whatever it is you're trying to buy 
and you actually can gift a phone because it's unlocked. And there's mm -hmm. so many more options in that market now than there were before. So now it's starting to, you know, make a little more sense in that regard. But you have to know what you're buying, right? Like you can't go and buy, I don't know, the OnePlus X, right? And give it to somebody on AT&T who might want that LTE band that's missing. Like that's kind of a bad move. So you have to know what you're doing and research it first. Oh, definitely. Well, and such and Bahal asks us, you know, is it worth it to go Black Friday shopping? And I, I think I used to think it was. And now I'm not talking about online shopping. I'm only talking about in person shopping. I used to think it was, but to me, the whole issue is as I've gotten older, time has become my most valuable commodity. I never have enough time. Mm -hmm. So if I'm saving $20 on a television, is it worth me interrupting my sleep schedule, getting up, going and standing at a store, or spending three, four hours there to save $20? And to me, unfortunately, it's really, it's not. It's not worth $20. Yeah. You know, because you're talking about basically it's almost like getting paid 4 to $5 an hour. Right. And no. <laughs> and especially in the day and age, you know, where sales are actually happening like all year long, Amazon has something and you have Amazon Prime and it's here in two days or in some cases today by 8 p.m. You know, like it's kind of like you. that's always in the back of my head, too. And I'm like, OK, well, maybe I'll just wait. Something yeah. else will come up and it won't be too long. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, so many companies now are having a like Black Friday in July, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there, there's sales going on. 12 months a year now right you know and, and black friday is just i don't know it, it's it's become more of an institution than anything mm. i just i don't i don't know i'm not that they, they, I, I i just can't ever imagine going to the stores again I feel like, and also we keep in mind, I think it's also like a tradition for people. It kicks off the holiday season, shopping. You know, for us, it's about tech. But for a lot of people, it's also about, you know, I'm going to go JCPenney and get new sweaters and stuff like that, you know. Well, anyone that gives clothes for Christmas should be, you know, taken out and flogged. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> oh, good grief. But uh, do you have, I, I think for me, you know, I, yes, I, I do some online shopping. And normally what I do is I pick up like some video game that I've been waiting on. Yeah. But I don't know. I I, just, I usually use the uh, Black Friday time to like think about the gifts that I want to get my family because I'm kind of the tech guy. So it's like, oh, what do I get them? So, mm -hmm. you know, look around. What's cheaper than it usually is that we've been following? What do people need? My family, maybe it's a Kindle or something like that. And you're like, okay, 75 bucks versus 100 bucks is probably, now it's probably a good time to buy. That's when I start to think about buying as opposed to like, you know, for myself when the only thing I really want right now is those big TVs. <laughs> well, you know, and the, I I forget what retailer it was. It was one of the ads we looked at uh, on BFads.net that uh, the $50 Amazon tablet's going to be $35 on yeah, the Yeah, exactly. At some retailers. <laughs> Man, buy a stack of those and just give them out of stocking stuffers. Yeah, seriously. People will I mean, find I've, you. I like the tablet. I mean, no, it's not a powerhouse. You're not going to do a ton with it. But you can use it as an e-reader. You can use it as an email e reader. You can buy a couple and leave them in different rooms of the house so you never have to carry anything around. <laughs> the I, bathroom tablet is what you're saying. Basically. <laughs> yeah. And at $35, why not? Yeah. You know, that is the one thing this, I mean, because I already thought it was a great bargain at $50. At $35, it's a freaking steal. I know. Yeah, you know, and uh, Roku yesterday was tweeting out that um, you know their prices, and they're marking down like the Roku three by like twenty dollars for Black Friday, and they're also marking down the Roku two or no, the Roku LE and the again, this show is not sponsored by Roku uh, <laughs> and the Roku <laughs> stick. I, I think we're going to see a lot of streaming deals this year, uh, you know, streaming devices. You know, so if you've thought about you know cord cutting or jumping into streaming at all, you know. This is uh, definitely the possibility for your year. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, we have a question here from Justin Yelse. Uh, I kid you not, Nexus 6 is 288 for the 32 gigabyte model on Newegg. With this pricing drop so extreme, does this drive any prospects for future phone sales you see in the future? Um, possibly. I mean, I think, yeah, as we know, Android phone sales are, are dipping. There, you know, I, I see a lot of people going, oh, it's the devastation of Android. No, it's, it's a sales dip. Um, I think a lot of companies, you also have to remember the Nexus 6 is now considered an older phone. You've got the 6P out, you've got the 6X out. 5X, yeah, 5X. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> 5X. Um, so yeah, there, there's a good chance that, you know, they, they want to clear some inventory out or they may just realize they still have a great phone they can sell. You know, uh, does it influence future pricing? I just, I don't know. I think it's, um, yeah, I don't know about future phone pricing, but current pricing, I mean, you have to wonder how our companies like, you know, OnePlus can react to that price. I think Nexus 6 is probably so low for exactly what you said. Like, they're trying to get it off the shelves. It's probably, you know, end of life for them in regards to selling the new hardware. So let's get rid of that. David Nunes asks, uh, what is the worst Black Friday purchase you two have ever made? And Todd, did you return yours? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever made like an actual Black Friday purchase. I, I've bought a lot on Black Fridays. Um, some were great deals. Um, I got my folks a 17-inch HP laptop one year. And that thing lasts... I, I, it was ridiculous how cheap it was. I can't remember how much it was now, but that thing lasted them like four, four and a half years. Wow. And uh, that was great. But what I always love is the, the vacuum cleaner sales. You know, <laughs> they, they like try to, you know, get you in and you go, well, we're going to have super cheap vacuum cleaners. You get there. It's like the most bare bones model you've ever seen in your life. And one year, my grandmother uh, had me pick one up for it. I was like, so in a month when this breaks, you let me right. know and I'll go get you a real vacuum. <laughs> And yeah, sure enough, it broke. Um, I didn't feel bad about that one, though, because it wasn't for me. Uh, I don't think... <laughs> one, one year, I bought, a, I bought a GameCube, which I never was a huge GameCube fan. I, mm. I probably did not get my money's worth out of the GameCube. I hated that controller. Uh, I think that's the, it, though, for me, and, and bad Black Friday purchases. My, I, I just haven't really done Black Friday in the past because I just I'm not a big fan of crowds and stuff and going to the store. But this year, like I said, it might be my first year, and I'm sure I'll return something. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> well, shifting gears a little bit, you want to discuss the Lumia 950 a little bit. How are you liking it so far? Yeah, I like it. Um, I wanted to talk about it because I had it last week, but it was under embargo, which lifted on Friday. And I did a quick article on the site. Just um, Here it is, by the way. Just, you know, five things to know about it. Um, you know, I'm not going after other sites or anything, but we got it on Monday. We had it till Friday. For me, it wasn't a lot of time to to actually play with it. I mean, we have to remember, this is Windows 10, so this is a lot. It's, it's similar. It's almost identical, but a lot has changed. So there's a lot to play with, and it's very buggy right now. So I've actually been emailing back and forth with Microsoft, like, hey, you realize this is happening? As, as a testament... 15 minutes before the show, you got something to finally work. You, yeah. you don't have to say what it was, but I mean, that, that tells you this has not been an easy process. Yeah. And last week I was working on my BlackBerry Priv review and I thought, oh, this would be a lot of fun. I'll work on that review in Word from Continuum on this, which is when you, you know you can plug this into uh, a doc that they provided with us with the review. So it's got you know three USB ports, HDMI, USB C uh, in and out, so one to the phone, and and then uh, Display Port. Kind of a heavy little brick. So anyway, I hooked it up to the computer. I hooked up a mouse. I hooked up a keyboard, and I was trying to work, and then it crashed. And not only did it crash Word, it then re the whole phone rebooted. Uh, this happened several times. Um, and then I've had other bugs where, like, apps... I actually just emailed Microsoft. Apps are, like, um, they won't update properly in the in the App Store. So, you know, like, on any phone where it's, like, 21 apps have updates. 
And then, like, but on this, like, six of them or whatever, two of them, depends on the day, will just fail. Like, they just stop. It won't update. And it gives an error. So I've had bugs like that that are uh, frustrating, and I couldn't get Skype and Messenger to work. It, it did work. That's the one I fixed with you earlier. Um, I don't know. There's a lot. The problem is there's a huge potential here. Like, Continuum is awesome. The idea of it, of hooking this up to a display and having multiple tabs open and working reliably is very cool to me. But there are so many mind-boggling things that don't make sense. For example, Continuum crashing. So if Continuum crashes and Microsoft is pushing this as a device where people can work, that makes no sense to me. I mean, how could I possibly rely on it? Second, Microsoft is pushing their apps that span uh, to Continuum. So like Word and Outlook and other apps, GroupMe, for example, which is owned by Microsoft, um, you plug this into the dock and put it on my 1080p display, for example, and you get a full screen. You know, it scales to so the full screen. It's not just blown up, but actually like a usable app. Well, Skype is left out of that, which makes no sense to me. Microsoft owns Skype, you know, and they're saying that all these developers should be creating apps that span and work with Continuum, and yet they're not doing it for their own. That that is one of the most bizarre things that you've told me because Microsoft had you know, oh come on developers get ready for Continuum it's going to be awesome and then you get it and you told me oh hey yeah uh, Skype doesn't work and I was like what? what yeah and especially for like we use Skype every day for work so yeah. other people must <laughs> yeah uh, although I find it hilarious you you Roy and I are the biggest Skype users yeah everyone else when I want to talk to them on Skype I'm like could you log in please <laughs> yeah it, but you Roy and I almost use it like an intercom system yeah but so those are like big things and I feel like a lot of it sort of has been either glossed over by Microsoft or other you know I don't know it's just these are important, and I and I feel like as I'm working on a review, I can't just sit here and bash the whole exp I mean, I should. I really should because this is available for public review right now, except I think that software updates are going to fix a lot of this, and I want to make sure that, you know, either they're coming or they're not coming before I say, you know, skip on this phone entirely because other things are great. The screen, Quad HD, the camera is pretty good. We have samples up. Uh, Windows Hello is awesome. I don't have glasses. I know people are having issues with that, but it scans your iris, so it recognizes me when the phone's locked. Uh, let's see, looking for you, it says, and then I just stare at it and it says, hello, Todd, and it's unlocked. So all that stuff is really fun, but just everything else is holding it back, and it's. I know for po folks that listen to the podcast, I've said I just want the smallest device I can actually work from, and for me, this was it. Like I could just throw it in my backpack and then sort or my pocket really, but have like the dock in my backpack and hook it up to a monitor and get worked on somewhere. And now it just doesn't work right. So I'm bummed also. It, but, it's a great idea, mm -hmm. but it, it has to work as smoothly as possible. Yeah. And I just can't figure out like, I don't even think it's my software, right? Because this it's the same software that everybody else has, same build. I just, I don't know. I'm pumped. I know. I, I don't but I'm worried, The review isn't going to focus on that. I mean, I have to address these issues, but I also want to talk about how amazing this could be. I mean, I don't know that a month from now there's not going to be some huge patch that fixes all these problems. And then here we are with the review saying the phone is garbage when it's not, you know. And that's just, I'm just going two extremes there. I don't think it's garbage at all. As always, I forgot to mute my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize for that, everyone. Um, well, let's uh, jump into questions. I, I can't believe how quickly the, the time is flying by. I, I thought this week was going to drag since I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> I cannot believe how fast this week has gone so far. Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, from David Nunes, what tips would you two give an inspiring journalist to get an internship or a first journalist job? Make sure that uh, I'm, I'm going to try to be very careful about how I say this. It is amazing to me when we get young, fresh writers who send us submissions that they is clear that they have not even made one proofing pass. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
make sure that you have your basics down. And I'm talking punctuation. I'm talking paragraph breaks. You know, when somebody new is coming into the business, I don't expect them to be as polished as say Todd is by any means, <laughs> but I don't expect to have to teach you the absolute basics that you should have learned in junior high English. Yeah. So make sure that, and I'm please no one take offense at that. I, this is a very common problem and I think it's a, probably a failing more on the schools than anything, but just make sure that you've gone over and over and over and it, it, it's going, it shows also a amount of respect. You know, if, if one typo gets through, one typo gets through. But if I can't, if I read a, a paragraph and I go, this could have been three paragraphs, <laughs> you, you have a problem. Yeah. You know? I think the one recommendation I'd make is if, you, if you're at a school that offers classes that are writing intensive, whether it's history, political science, English, creative writing, take those. Journalism, obviously. I didn't study journalism. I studied English, but those and just write a lot. I mean, that's what our job is. But there are all kinds of journalists, video journalists, photograph photographers, and writers. And um, if we're going to hire for our staff, writing is very important, and video is very important. So it depends on what kind of kind you want to do. But I, I would say, you know, the journalism that I do definitely spend a lot of time writing. Well, and on your own. And show people that you can write. There, there's so many free places to get a blog right. nowadays. You know, and, and it doesn't even have to be online. I, that was something I did for years. You know, and I, I still do. You know, it, it's just my way of uh, clearing my head and all that. Write something every single day. Yeah. You know, and even if no one ever sees it, just keep writing. Keep. And also, and this was one of the biggest helps uh to me when i was doing some creative writing and you know people kept telling me it was stiff and all that as soon as i would get done i started reading it out loud to myself yeah and you will be amazed how different your writing will be after you hear how it, and i i don't know the exact wording i don't know if there is an official word the what i call it is how it falls on the ear and so sit down and you know, I don't care if people think you're crazy, read your writing out loud to yourself and you'll hear where it doesn't sound natural, where it doesn't flow. And you'll start to hear your paragraph breaks and you'll hear your punctuation in the way that you're speaking. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely it, make sure that you at some point sit down and read out loud your own stuff. And it'll, that'll be one of the biggest helps to you ever. Yeah, and read other stuff too. Yeah, uh, no, what? What? Who reads? <laughs> but uh, uh, from what's it worth? Will Continuum be an update available for older Windows phones? No, because it requires a uh, Snapdragon eight hundred eight or eight ten right now, I believe. Unfortunately, not surprised by that. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, from such and Bahal, what kinds of stuff would you recommend buying on black Friday weekend slash cyber Monday? Are video games a good idea to buy them? Yeah, actually I think video games are one of the best things to purchase on black Friday weekend, cyber Monday shopping bonanza. Um, because a lot of times, you know, you'll see games that were just out, you know, within the past couple of months already marked down $20. Mm -hmm. Uh, pretty much any time a game comes out in the fall now, I just don't bother buying it until Black Friday because I know it's going to be discounted by a third. And you can pick up, you know, like even year old games for like nine bucks. Yeah. You know, so why not? Yeah, I, I think video games are one of the biggest wins on Black Friday without question. And then just, you know, whatever you think is, looks like a good deal. You know, it just, it, it totally depends on what you're looking for. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> From, oh, good grief. Kutcon, I hope I said that right. Uh, what do you think about the Apple Watch dock? I haven't seen <laughs> one in person yet, have you? No, 
No, I haven't. But uh, we talked about this briefly on the last show. It, mm-hmm. it just it didn't look like the day before I wrote it up as a rumor, and I was like, yeah, I don't know if that's real. It didn't look like much of an Apple product, and it still kind of looks like a coaster. Which I mean, they all do. So here's here, Samsung's. They all kind of look wireless charging. They all look weird. I'm more interested to see if this leads to wireless charging in the iPhone, though, because it would be the perfect talk for that, too. You know? Why Why else have this stupid little thing? I don't know. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> and that's as an Apple Watch owner. I would never uh, pay $80 for that thing. From Sachin Bahal, what do you guys think of the Star Wars version of Google products? Um, I like some of them. <laughs> me, too. The lightsaber noises on Yahoo are driving me nuts. On, on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. YouTube, yeah. <laughs> that was cute for a while, and then it got really old really fast. Um, yeah. Also, the, the background picture on Gmail is driving me nuts. Yeah, it's kind of uh, stupid. Um, tomorrow, i got to take a, a three-hour drive, though, so I'm looking forward to using Waze and having C3PO guide yeah. me on my route. Well, Although I, I, know, yeah. I know the route by heart, so I really don't need a GPS, <laughs> but I'm going to use it anyway just so I can hear 3PO talking to me. Yeah, um, I like the idea. I think it's really fun that they did that. You know. Yeah, it, it, it's a fun idea. I, I think some of it's a little bit of overkill because, I mean, like you're watching a YouTube video and you accidentally move the mouse and all of a sudden you hear the, the lightsaber swooshing sound. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> I was trying to do that last night when I was uh, working on uh, troubleshooting a Plex server. Like, so I'm watching videos and it's like, mmm, mmm, and I'm like, ah, oh, got to pause and go back because I didn't hear what you just said. Oh, yeah, no, that, that it, it's cute, but quite possibly overkill. Yeah. Uh, also from Kutcon, uh, hey guys, do you know why the Nexus 6P has an estimated shipping date of mid mid of December internationally? Was that the release date? I don't know what the international release date is. And I'm not sure. Yeah, why it was December? I know stock's been in and out, but that's uh, what's that? Looking at a month from now. Yeah. Um, oh, this is always a good question, especially towards the end of the year. From David Nunez, Todd and Sean, any tips for selling old phones, websites that offer the most, websites that sell the fastest, et cetera, et cetera. Thanks, guys. Uh, the two sites that I always recommend if you don't want to deal with actually trying to sell it to somebody you know, through Craigslist or eBay is either uh, gazelle.com or, and it amazes me how many people don't know this exists, Amazon has a trade-in program. Mm-hmm. Uh, they won't pay you cash. They'll pay you in-store credit. But I've seen them give crazy amounts of money for some phones. Um, the Galaxy Mega 6.3, only in white, as I learned, unfortunately. Uh, if you had a white Galaxy Mega 6.3, they're giving like $212 right now. Uh, for black, they're giving 12 <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. Um, Not worth it. But yeah, just Google Amazon trade-in and trade hyphen in and you'll be able to jump to that page on amazon and the other one is gazelle like the animal gazelle.com uh and those aren't you know if they say they want it that's it they'll give you a prepaid shipping label and you're done yeah ebay i've used ebay too um for both auctions which are just terrible i mean when i've done it with iphones you're you're fighting scammers every single time and they win a lot and then, but eBay has their also their trade in. They give you like the guaranteed price, and you, you box it up and send it into them, label I, and everything. One time, I had bought um, off somebody my dad knew. I bought a nineteen seventy four Les Paul guitar. Nice. And uh, I had I at one time I had way too many guitars, and uh, I went to sell it. And I thought, oh, I'd paid like four fifty for it. You know, I didn't know what it was really worth. This guy calls me up because I had my phone number, you know, my business number in the eBay auction. Yeah, can you uh, can you read me the serial numbers off the pots? I'm like, what are the pots? He goes, <laughs> oh, well, you know, take the back panel off, and, and you need to look at the numbers on the back of the volume control knobs. I'm like, oh, good grief. And <laughs> it, it, he was just trying to make sure they were original right. parts, and it was completely original. It ended up being worth my time because it sold for twenty five hundred dollars. Wow! But yeah, it, oh, that was not a fun week because I had so many questions about that stupid guitar. <laughs> so yeah, the idea of trying to sell phones, oh, 
you yeah. know, I that, that's why I just like going to Gazelle and going, I have this phone. Do you want it? Good. You want it? Give me shipping label. Goodbye. Yeah, I don't have the original box. I don't know where the charger went. Give me 200 bucks. Fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. Exactly. You do all that there. Uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. From Briz and Franco, what do you think of the show me announcements? I would have loved to get the air purifier but the $120 <laughs> shipping fees made it prohibitive folks i wanted you i want you to know that actually i i had a talk today with todd about right. <laughs> headline writing and i really really was concerned about the fact that jacob did not mention the air purifier in his show me article headline i should have had it there you're right i really todd you know it <sighs> I, your department let me down this morning by not mentioning the air purifier in the headline. Uh, should know about it. Okay. Other than the, other than the air purifier, which I'm still laughing about. What did you think of the two new devices and where was the me five? I know. Yeah. That's, I guess a mystery still. Cause we're waiting for that in the Snapdragon 820 that's rumored to pack. So we could, we potentially had the, you know, the first Snapdragon 820 phone announcement. Uh, I don't know. I've never actually used a Xiaomi phone, and I'm excited to try them at some point. Uh, I, I think it's neat that they move to metal and are able to keep the cost down still. So, I don't know. I, they look like great devices. We just No, I kind of wish they were sold in the U.S. Then I'd probably be a lot more excited. I know. Someday. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't get it. Uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. Uh, sorry, there, there's a lot of questions here, so I'm just quickly scanning them. From Justin Yelse, what's going to be the must-have product this season? Cut the cord and TV is irrelevant as of now. Um, I'm sorry. It's not irrelevant. Um, oh, I, I can tell you what's going to be on everybody's... <laughs> BB-8. The remote control BB-8. <laughs> This is going to be the hottest product of the holiday season, especially once the movie comes out. You're not going to be able to find this thing anywhere. You think? Oh, it's going to be like Tickle Me Elmo all over again. Oh, man, I should get one now then. Yeah, I would. I, I, I went through the whole Tickle Me Elmo thing. It, <laughs> that was insanity. Or, or, oh, good grief, go back to the 80s and the Cabbage Patch Kids. Oh, God. <laughs> Or uh, the first year of Power Rangers. That was a nightmare. Huh. I never wanted as a kid like the hottest toys. I guess. I don't know. I don't think my parents gave me an option really. <laughs> Your parents didn't love you. That's what you're saying. Yeah, that's right. What do I think is going to be hot this season? I don't know. I In the realm of electronics, they're really it's hard anymore for anything to be the hot item. I mean, they make millions upon millions. And because of their, their high dollar value you know, you're never going to see people going nuts and, you know, and like the, I, mean, there was violence over cabbage patch kids, <laughs> you know, and, uh, it over tickle me Elmo. But, um, I don't think you're ever going to see that sort of thing, but I think with like BB eight, you know, the thing is that it, it's something anyone can play with, you know, it, it's, it, there's going to be a, a two hour, you know, over a two hour long commercial for him playing in theaters all over the world. You know, they're probably going to sell a ton of those things, even though it's $150. Dang. Even if you do think much. cord cutting is irrelevant. <laughs> oh. I think my wife and I are going to cord cut while we're uh, we're on that topic. Go for it, man. It's awesome. Uh, from Such and Bahal, hey, Sean, is Disney Infinity 2.0 for the Xbox One worth it for $20? It's on sale slash clearance at my local Best Buy in Canada. They are selling the Toy Box Starter pack and the marvel superhero star pack each for 20 dollars um the only problem with infinity and this annoys me to no end is that you cannot play the play sets from 2.0 with 3.0 you can't play the 1.0 with 2.0 and so on you can uh, the figures can go to any generation but the play sets can't for twenty dollars, the way I would be looking at it is, you're getting two figures for ten dollars each, and uh, you'll you'll get you know five six hours of playtime. I, I would go with the Marvel starter pack. You, you're going to get five six hours out of the game. 
you know, I, I don't know. That's a tough call because I, I don't understand why they can't make the play sets cross compatible. That I, I've had many conversations with the, the guys at Avalanche, you know, interviewing them or whatever. And they're like, oh, it's just not technically possible. I'm like, come on. If the figures work, why can't the play sets? Hmm. It, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I don't know. But for 20 bucks, why not? Hey, I'll be glad to spend your money for you, Sachin. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. From Brazen Franco, Ars Technica has defined the 950 as a sure choice for the WP fan crowd, but a no-buy for others. Would you say the same thing, Todd? Yeah, probably. I think that's probably what I'll come to, but, which is unfortunate because I think, I think that a lot of the features could be really cool for people, and yet, you know they're not yet and that's the problem so windows windows 10 fans or windows phone fans are you know okay fine they finally have a new flagship they've been waiting a long time for one but it it shouldn't have just been that it should have been appealing to a lot more people because the windows phone base is so small i mean and i'm looking i was obviously i just finished the priv review and i was going through the the passport recently and when you think about just all the apps that are available, even on the BlackBerry 10 platform that aren't available for Windows 10, it's frustrating. I mean, and these are just a few that I've noticed already on Windows 10, but like Periscope and Snapchat and stuff like that. I mean, Periscope now is such a, for me, has been very important and a compelling app, especially given the global events. And um, and Snapchat's kind of fun, and you just don't get those. And, and Microsoft's just betting that, and this is they've been betting for a long time that okay now developers are building for billions of or a billion computers running windows you know of course they're going to build apps that scale to this and that of course is what bothers me because a microsoft's not doing it with skype <laughs> hasn't yet and b like i don't i don't know that they're sure it might be easy but so many developers have already said, eh, nobody uses Windows Phone. I'm not going to build the app. Or they ditch them. <clears throat> I mean, look, Facebook's on board, but Instagram's been on beta forever. And it's just that kind of problem that has to stop. And Microsoft's hoping it does, but I'm not sure, so sure. You know, I've, I've sat here for, I don't know, four years. And I've been following Microsoft for much longer than that. But for, for four years or so since Windows Phone has been available, and they've been addressing this app problem and promising and promising and promising every single time and saying, this is what we're going to do this time, this is what we're going to do this time, and it just hasn't worked. So there, I'm There's a very that. simple solution here. Microsoft simply needs to loan developers to these companies. Yeah, but they've even offered cash incentives in the past, and that's how they said in the past. Like, People are definitely going to do it because we're going to pay them to do it, and that didn't even work. Because right. developers, rightly so, I mean, that's a lot to dedicate resources mm -hmm. to an app that's not used by that many people right. that they then have to support. And uh, and like I was saying, they can, you know, sure, they're just going to build the Windows app and that'll work. And I hope that that, you know, makes sense. Except just building the Windows app, like CNN, like I never go into, like, why do I want a CNN Windows app? You know, like I never open the app, I just go to the website. And I think that's the kind of thinking that's just not working on a lot of levels. Yeah. Uh, quick cr clarification from Justin Yelsey. Sorry for the structure of that question. I meant to state the irrelevance of TV, major broadcast channels, not cord cutting. I love cutting the cord and would never go back. Sorry for the confusion. Okay, that makes a lot more sense to me. I, I've really got to remember to mute my phone. Uh, <laughs> Oh, good grief. Well, we are uh, at the end of the time. I cannot believe how fast that went today. My yeah. goodness. But uh, as always, we do appreciate you joining us. And again, as a reminder, we will not be here next week. We will return in two weeks. Uh, I'm going to England, and I, I'm sorry, none of you can come with me. Uh, <laughs> As oh, always, man. you can find the Techno Buffalo Show on the iTunes Store by searching for the Techno Buffalo Show. And we do appreciate if you rate and review us. This, that does help out the show. You can also find us on Pocket Cast. You can subscribe via RSS feed, or you can find us on the Stitcher app, which means you can listen to us anytime, anywhere. We are trying to make sure that wherever you find podcasts, you can find the Techno Buffalo Show. Until next time, I'm Sean Ani. I'm the editor in chief of the site. I have been joined by deputy managing editor Todd Hazelton. Hi, everybody. And we'll see you back in two weeks, folks. Till then, take it easy. Bye-bye.